Hello, everyone. Welcome to episode 19 of the Comic Book Showcase. My name is Jamie Hari. I'm founder of Marvel and DC Databases, and today we're talking about nerd bullies. Uh, not people who are uh, bullied, uh, who are nerds, but rather people who are nerds who bully, uh, specifically. Um, this is actually, September is actually National Bullying Prevention Month, so that's part of the reason why we're talking about that today. Um, joining me are uh, Kyle, Rab, and Billy, and we're going to be uh, talking about some of our personal experiences, but where, where the industry is and, and, and uh, those types of things as well. So I um, wanted to talk about a little bit about um, nerd-on-nerd -nerd bullying uh, in mainstream uh, news recently. Uh, there's been uh, a couple of incidents where um, a girl, a woman who was a writer for uh, a popular, uh, you know, pop culture um, online magazine, made some, you know, uh, articles about uh, video games and, and was actually heavily derided by the video game community as something to the effect of, you're a girl, why do you have an opinion on video games? And of course, um, that is, you know, spurred a lot of attention. Uh, it's not, it's not an appropriate um, Attitude to have, and and it's 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 part of the reason why this this National Bullying Prevention uh, Month exists. Um, as a child myself, I was bullied for you know getting good grades and you know studying really hard and not being you know the captain of the basketball team uh, and whatnot. So um, you know I have we all have personal experiences and stories that we can tell. Uh, but I'd like actually to ask Billy uh, something we were talking about earlier. Um, what have your experience experiences been with bullying in the comic book community? Wait, I'm sorry. I just want to say, Jamie, was your was your entire school was everybody who was not the captain of the basketball team bullied? Was it just like a like a tyrannical society ruled by this one guy? Um, no, I, no, no, no. Actually, uh, we had 18 captains of the basketball team. <laughs> no one, everyone was either a captain or you didn't play. So <laughs> that must have been really hard for you, Jamie. Um, yeah. <laughs> I feel like I am more and more running into this problem of guys who are into like, cool things like, like comic books and video games becoming really like mean and nasty in a very unnecessary way towards people who are just starting to get into it. I think a lot of it, uh, and I, I feel weird using the word nerd, especially because the meaning of the word nerd has changed a lot in the last couple years. Uh, we've been talking a bit about that. Where it it used to be this very like like underground thing is what it meant. Whereas now it's kind of it's meaningless. Like everybody everybody likes Batman. Everybody is playing a video game. Everybody is a nerd in some sense. Uh, <clears throat> so there are all these things that absolutely and that's that's wonderful. I'm so happy that more and more people are getting into all of these things are getting into superheroes, are getting into all of these things that I love, because it means there are more options available, uh, I can talk to more people about the things that I love, and also those things, because they're getting more attention, uh, are having a, a wider variety of voices into the art that they're creating, but there's this very, there's this like deep, like diehard contingent of people, and I, I think, I, I feel like using the phrase true nerd, because I, I hate that phrase, and I don't think that I feel like anybody who uses the phrase true fan of anything is kind of a jerk, but they're the types of people who use phrases like true fan or true nerd. Who they to them it's like it's like a clubhouse, like a very exclusive thing that they are angry other people are trying to get in on the thing that they love. And they and they they say things they act like you're not uh, justified. You're not you can't really enjoy it unless you're one of them. Yeah, those things are called gatekeepers. Uh, those guys who, or I don't want to say guys, but people who want to sort of man the gate and say who can be part of the fandom and who can't. They're the gatekeepers of the fandom, and they're, they're illegitimate claim to the role. I mean, they have an illegitimate claim to that role, and they may believe themselves to be true fans, but in fact, they're, I mean, they are fans, but so are the people coming in, and they have to recognize that. And I feel like we could like that behavior. It manifests. It manifests itself in a lot of different ways that we don't always necessarily even. A lot of people don't even think about. But like the like the kind of guys who treat cosplayers like shit, and act like they're like they're not real. These people who are spending hours and hours making elaborate costumes. I don't care enough about anything to do that. 
uh, Kyle, uh, myself, I, I think Billy, you as well. We had the uh, and Rap. We actually had the oppor the unique opportunity to judge the cosplay contest at New York Comic Con last year, and um, it was actually a very eye opening experience for me because I, I saw a, a wide um, continuum or spectrum of quality in the cosplay uh, that was actually done. So some of them went for the approach of meticulous, you know, sewing and, and elaborate, you know, props, and others were just creative ideas that perhaps weren't executed quite as well from a technical standpoint. And and, and actually just seeing that the way that the, the crowd reacted in terms of cheers or jeers for the various costumes actually gave me a bit of pause to think, I think that there's sort of, um, you know, the and this you know, goes beyond cosplay, but generally the idea of if you're not you know in the upper one percent or five or ten percent of any fandom, whether it's cosplay, video games, or comic books, you're not uh, and as you say, true fan or true nerd. And and it's it's too bad because there's all these people that may actually enjoy that that topic uh, as much as everyone else in the room, but the fact that they're not as good of a, uh, you know, seamstress or seamster, uh, or perhaps they're not, you know, physically coordinated well enough to land in the top leaderboard of, you know, Halo, whatever version we're on at this point, 26 or whatever. But, you know, it's it's too bad because there's all these people that genuinely enjoy it just as much as everyone but aren't able to execute in the same way or don't have as much money to buy all of the, you know, comic books, you know, Action Comics number one for 3.2 million. I mean, I already have my copy, but not everyone has that kind of money, right? Yeah, and I feel like a lot of so far what we've been talking about is these kind of like subtle exclusionary behaviors that still fall into this umbrella, but they're not quite as bad as it gets. Where a lot, a lot of the bigger issues, like that that uh, that thing with Janelle Selling, it's the people who are going online and harassing women and talking and and every time cosplayers complain about. Uh, weird pervy dudes ogling them. The guys who give them that le like, like you deserve it. Like you, you not. You have to prove yourself. Uh, it's the, just this like gross, disgusting, nasty attitude that has become not just something people have internalized, but uh, with the internet and the ability to anonymously comment, has become something like this toxic substance that it feels like infects everything. I think part of that uh, is like, you know, a lot of these people just don't have the social skills to react appropriately to these, you know, these situations. They're, they're feeling threatened that, you know, people are coming into their, their fandom, which I don't, I don't know that that's an appropriate response at all to feel threatened, but people just don't know how to react. They don't know what to, to say or do, and so they lash out against these people who they kind of see as, as, you know, invading their turf and, you know, taking over taking over what they love, even though it's not its not like only one cute person can have it. It's not King of the Hill. Every, everybody, you know, can enjoy this at the same time without anybody, you know, losing a portion of their enjoyment. Yeah. Kyle brings up a, a very good point, and that's, I do, I think a lot of that is where it comes from, and that is the attitude, as you mentioned, towards the end, that people should have. It does, it seems to come from this place of a lot of these guys who have felt like social outcasts at some point, and I don't mean to diminish that. It is absolutely shitty that they are then taking that out on other people, but at the very least, you, you can kind of, you can see in a lot of places, it's mostly these sort of unhappy dudes who feel like they have been bullied a lot in their own lives, and that's where a lot of bullying seems to come from. It, like, bullying is almost never from people who are just happy and well-adjusted and enjoying everything. It's from people who kind of feel victimized for being nerds, and their response to that, instead of trying to kill the victimization, is to then victimize other people for being nerds who they feel aren't being victimized enough. So I actually, uh, it, just a, a different take on that. Um, so there's been a lot of um, incidents uh, of misogyny. I don't want to, you know, derail the topic entirely, but within the people in the industry. So taking a step back from fandom and saying, well, the the people that actually work in the industry, the creators, the um, whether it's a, a developer at a, a game studio or whether it's a writer or artist at, at one of the the big four publishers. Um, they they have infighting there where um, male writer number one says to a female writer number two like you don't know how to write Batman properly or whatever you know the the case may be or, or saying the the art of a particular person is is um, you know not appropriate because I mean there's actually an example right now and I 
you'll have to forgive me for not remembering the artist, but it's actually Spider-Man, uh, a Spider-Woman, a, a cover of Spider-Woman where she's positioned physically in a way that is, we'll say, contorted. And there's actually been a lot of, of hubbub about, um, you know, is it portraying her in the, the character in a sort of objectified way, or is it that, you know... Um, uh, you know, somehow speaking to the the nature of the artist and their their thoughts on women, and and it's it's spun, it's sparking a lot of uh, infighting in the actual industry themselves. Of, you know, removing fans. Um, how, what do you guys think about um, when sort of there's nerd on nerd hating and fighting uh, within the creative community? I think, again, it kind of comes, a lot of these creators kind of come from the fan community. Like, it's not somebody that is writing, you know, new, newspaper articles for, you know, a big newspaper or, you know, investigative journalists or anything like that. It's people that are usually from the fandom. And so a lot of these people are coming with kind of the same ideas that, the, you know, that everybody else is having, and they're having the same kind of gatekeeping, uh, you know, idealism or whatever it is and it's just kind of jumping from the fandom to the creative side. When you when you talk about that instance of the spider woman image it makes me think like just we, we focus a lot on this topic for like gatekeeping against women because I think we, we treat women as though they've never really been part of comics before and Part of that is because we, they've been excluded for so long, and part of it's because they don't really want to be part of comic book fandom because we're not making comics that appeal to them. Like, we make comics with women who look ir unusually contorted, and I don't necessarily want to pick on that Spider-Woman cover, but like a Willem March Catwoman a few years ago, her Zero issue, she was all twisty-wisty, and... That's, I mean, that doesn't make a woman want to read a comic necessarily because it's not, it's not representative of a woman's life. It's not representative of, I mean, it might be a story that a woman could enjoy, but it's framed in this weird kind of, you stay at arm's length, ladies, kind of way. It always feels to me like a, like a weird self-perpetuating cycle where comic books aren't aimed, they don't make comic books for women. They make them where a lot of the time women are treated as as objects or secondary characters or just written like men because most comic book writers are men. And that's a very unfortunate thing, but then when people try to change that, uh, people say, well, that's not really appealing to the audience of comic books, which is all dudes at this point. So they're not writing comic books for women because women aren't reading comic books and women aren't reading comic books because they're not writing comic books for women. And when women write comic books, men threaten them with rape. Yes, I men say, oh my god, it's so, you, and anybody who does not, and I feel like a lot of people who argue about this don't understand just how bad it is. You gotta, you gotta Google some of that stuff. Like all of the, I don't, I don't personally have a huge opinion on Anita Sarkeesian, but once you Google just the level of threats that she received from people, you are start to understand just how bad it is for women in nerd fandom. And it's so disturbing to me this the way that we both we both want to share our love of comics with everybody that we know like as fans of comics we definitely want to share that love with people because we feel like oh we've been holding this inside for so long and <laughs> I want to like share just want to explode rainbows and, like I'm a care bear and we definitely want to share it with women we definitely want them to be like yeah women like comics too yeah but then when they do like comics we immediately jump on them and treat them as sex objects or mm -hmm. or we hate on them i mean it's one or the other and it's never just like oh you're also a fan of comics let's be best friends and talk about batman i want to mention that the other thing people do uh and then i think Kyle had a point um, the other thing people do is they, they like they hate on them or they like weirdly objectify them in a way that makes a lot of women I think very uncomfortable. Like put like yeah. putting them on this strange like nerd princess pedestal. Yeah. Kyle, what's I your think, I think again it boils, all boils down to this idea that they're just not able to react 
in social situations the way that they a normal person can. And so they don't know what to do. They either you know, they either react with like I want to date this woman, like I must you know, I must go after her in weird inappropriate ways, or it's like I'm going to push her out of the fandom because it threatens me. And I think that's yeah. just a really really weird thing to do because if you're super into comics and you're single and lonely and want to get a girl, if you find a girl that's into comics, the best thing to do is to talk to her about probably maybe the only thing you have in common, which is comics. So, like, forcing her out of the fandom is kind of backfiring on your, your goal of meeting and, and talking to women in a normal situation. Totally. You, you, make, yeah. uh, you make a good point. Um, definitely want to explore this topic further. Um, we, we like to invite all of our audience to comment and let us know. Um, you know what? What have you, uh, have you been bullied either specifically by a, a fellow nerd or someone in the fandom, or uh, have you unfortunately been a, a bully of of uh, uh, a gatekeeper or or of uh, just you know misogyny or racism or anything like that? Like, tell us about your experiences uh, in this on this topic uh, in the comments below and and join us uh, in the conversation. This is National Bullying Prevention Month, so spread the word. Um, not cool, man. Not cool. Thank you very much for joining us. Episode 19, take care and talk to you soon. And that's a wrap for another episode of the Comic Book Showcase. Join us again live via chat or Twitter next week. Like us on Facebook or follow us on Twitter. And to learn more about today's topics, check out the Marvel and DC databases on Wikia, the ultimate resources for comic book information anywhere.